Now, we've already looked at the biggest hits of 2023. Boring yawn. Well, yeah, according to the numbers every year, yes. <laughs> I was going to say, you've already watched the video. You probably haven't. Statistically speaking, you haven't. Maybe you could go back. <laughs> yeah. There's no time. There's no time. The end of the year is fast approaching. We do not have time. Exactly. So now we are going to be looking at the biggest bombs of 2023. And let me just say, haha, sucked in. Everybody who worked their hearts out to make these movies, they didn't make a billion dollars. Get in the bin. Some of them are good, Mason. That doesn't matter. Get in the bin. <laughs> It's the only metric that counts, so get in the bin. Uh, a few things up top. Please leave a like, yes, yes, etc. Get in the bin, so on and so forth. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, the way that these are calculated, and it depends on what information is available, but you take the budget and you double it to include marketing and distribution. Mm -hmm. That usually maxes out at about $100 million unless stated otherwise. There might be some exceptions, but honestly... Who cares? That's right. Shut uh, up. <laughs> Was that the theme of last week? Yeah, shut up. We're, rec we're recording these separately, so shut up. <laughs> uh, also, it doesn't take into account being redeemed on streaming because, of course, films take on a second life. Mm. It doesn't take into account merchandise. For example, The Flash, which will appear on this list maybe. Oh, spoilers. The Batman merch from that sold incredibly well. Oh, right, of course. Because, you know, it's Keaton, whatever. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Flash stuff, not as much. We're also doing 12 movies with some bonus extras towards the end. It's a big year for doing badly. That's right. It's your fault, the audience. That's right. It's no one else's fault. It's not executive's fault. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's you. Not, it's not marketing's fault. Nope. Your fault. And you know that. Yeah. And shut up. Shut up. At number 12, we've got Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. That's right. On a budget of $291 million, but they did have a COVID Swiss insurance payout through Chubb. Oh. Got the budget down Chubb. to- Chubb. Chubb. They got the budget down to $219 million roughly, but it only made $567 million. This one, according to Variety, needed 600 to make profit. Ouch. Now, we'll get to that in a moment, but I just want to- Chubb, really? Yeah. I thought they just made like- Padlocks that you bought at the hardware store. Doing all sorts of things. Incredible. I mean, who wants to insure Tom Cruise, you know? It's true. It's slim pickings. Maniacs. <laughs> We're starting with an exception here, I feel, because this particular production, you said they had to make $600 million to make even. Yeah. In excess of that. Now, that is also because they shut down production, but they mm -hmm. kept paying people. Yes during that production because there were, you know, there were COVID issues and all that sort of stuff. So they, they shut the production down for a while, but they paid the cast, they paid the crew, so they didn't have to... Tom Cruise screamed at everybody. That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Giving them the motivation they needed to press on. And the other thing that happened with this movie was that Oppenheimer and Barbie killed it. They sure did. It was a real inopportune time. Dead Reckoning was released a couple of weeks before. Yeah. I mean, they knew it was going to happen, right? I don't think they did. Otherwise, this wouldn't happen. I don't know, man. And the other thing is, it's interesting because the next one isn't going to be called Dead Reckoning Part 2. That's right. So you know it didn't do particularly well when they're like, we're rebranding for this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. We're going to pretend that uh, this is a whole separate ball game. Next up. Coming in at number 11 is Dungeons & Dragons Honor Amongst Thieves. Also known as D&D &D Hat. <laughs> I only just realised that quite recently. I never saw that. Neither did I, but I wrote a, me I wrote a note to myself, I'm going to rewatch that, and I wrote D&D &D Hat. Oh. On a budget of $150 million, it had a box office return of $208 million. I mean, it was a big swing. Mm. I just don't think this has the general audience appeal to carry it. I didn't see a lot of marketing for it. I loved it. I, thought I loved it, was it too. Great. Yeah, yeah, I think a very charming cast. Mm -hmm. It felt like a game of D&D &D in that there was a guy called Jonathan. Yep. He's a big bird man. What's his name? Jonathan? Jonathan? <laughs> Jonathan. Oh, okay. That's right, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I know Chris Pine has also talked about maybe there will be a sequel. He's been saying that recently, which makes me think that this has kind of taken on a life in streaming, I can't imagine they'd put $150 million into it again. No, I think maybe the next step would be just to get the cast back together and play a game of Dungeons & Dragons over Zoom. You I think might that be might right. Be the, yeah, yeah. That might be the pinnacle of this franchise at this point. There is a TV show coming, but I'm not sure it's linked to any of these characters mm. and whatever. Yeah, I know Hasbro were really keen to have a good run at this and make this like their Pirates of the Caribbean or MCU or whatever. But haven't they also just recently laid off like a thousand people? But they had to do that. Oh, the poor performance of Hat. No, no, because they get more bonuses and you save more money that oh, way. Oh, sure, sure, sure. It looks sure. better on the, the line I love that, that goes line. up. Yeah. I love that line. They love the line, mm. but only when it goes up. At number 10, and you'd think this would be higher on the list, and I suspect it might be, but we'll come back to that a bit later. It's The Flash. Sure. On a budget of $220 million, it made $270 million. That's 50 mil free and clear. No. When you take into account marketing and all Shut of up. that. It's, it lost about $49 million, probably more. Mm. But also, in terms of merch, there's a very good chance that this 
may have turned, you know, some profit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But what a disaster. And you, I'll tell you what, Mason, it's yes. a bad movie and I'm glad. That's no, true. But like I said, you've got to get your old long hair Bruce Wayne with spaghetti making action, action <laughs> figure. You know? Look, I just feel like this was the culmination of everything that is wrong with the DC universe that they were running. Mm -hmm. No lessons were learnt, filled with terrible cameos, bringing people back from the dead in really ghoulish ways. Mm, sure. Just dreadful. What a dreadful movie. No, I had fun with I it. I mean, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. We liked it. <laughs> yeah, so this is also the reason, well, one of the reasons that they are rebooting into the DCU. Now, that was already going to happen, but they quickly shut up about, this is the linchpin into the next universe. Yeah, huh, you yeah, don't yeah. hear them saying that anymore, do you? No, they're not saying like, well, the multiverse shenanigans caused the new DCU. They're like, there's a new DCU. Who knows why? Ezra Miller's trapped with George Clooney. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Just let it go. Next up at number nine. We've got Bo is Afraid. Oh, sure. Ari Aster. That's uh, right. Joaquin Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that was a big budget movie, but there you go. About $35 million, and if you double that for marketing, which I would say is probably not entirely accurate because it wasn't like everywhere all the time. Mm. It made $11 million at the box office. In terms of an A24 film, this is one of the biggest movies that they've ever made, mm -hmm. and I think it just didn't hit with general audiences because it's very weird and existential and, mm -hmm. and all sure, of sure, that. Sure. So. <laughs> existential being a word we use for any movie we don't understand. That's right. It must be pretty existential. Oh, mate, and this next one's very existential. <laughs> Expend Four Balls? Oh, sure. The fourth installment in the Expend All Balls franchise. That's right. Mm, just get those old boys in there. Who are the new Expend Four Balls? It's Megan Fox and 50 Cent. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Those two classic action movie heroes from the 80s. 50 Cent did that third-person shooter, and Megan Fox was in some of the Transformers movies slash Ninja Turtles movies. That's very true, isn't it? On a budget of $100 million, it made $37 million at the box office. Now, let me just say this, yes. okay? I put down for this, they probably put about $20 million into marketing. Okay, sure. But there is no way that they spent $100 million on this movie. You That's impossible. Think? I think they just took a bunch of the money, which is fine. Sure. I'm totally okay with. That's called a salary, James. <laughs> That's how you can label it, yes. That's right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this was done eight years ago, you know? Why is this happening at $100 million? No idea. What lessons were learned here? I, I don't... No one saw this. I don't know. There's no <laughs> way for me to know. I don't even know of anyone who knows of anyone who saw this movie. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So there you go. Not a surprise, but also, what are you doing? Coming in at number seven, we've got Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. Yeah, that came out this year. Yeah, things weren't already looking good for the DCEU or whatever it's called. Never had an official name. No. On a budget of $125 million and according to Variety, $100, $100 million in marketing. You nearly said $100 in marketing <laughs> and that could be accurate. It made $133 million. I don't think it's as strong as the first one. I think they made a huge mistake not folding Black Adam into these movies. Mm, because sure. what are you doing even with this guy? I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, that's not... That feels like it was not in the hands even of the director of this oh, movie. Oh, no. That yeah. was in the hands of The Rock. I really like David F. Sandberg. Like, I like his movies, but I think there are a lot of external factors to this, which mm. is how we got here. So, look, I thought it was fine. Gal Gadot was clearly not there for any of her scenes <laughs> when they were filmed, uh -huh. you know. And that, I think, really takes something away from these movies when yeah. they're just like, here's a cameo of somebody who filmed on a different year, you know? Yeah, that's right. I've said uh, this on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, uh, good plug. Where Thank we you. talk movies and comics and TV shows. That's exactly right. To me, something like Shazam 2 or Black Adam is like, as a kid, picking up a random comic book and reading through it and going, no, nah, it's pretty pretty fun. Yeah. But again, for these prices, you'd think that Warner Brothers is wanting more than, it was pretty fun. You would think that, wouldn't you? Would, would I recommend it? No, oh, but I'll leave it on a park bench and if somebody else wants to pick it up and read it. <laughs> Next up at number six, we've got Air. Oh. Might be a bit surprising to find this one here. Yeah, so that's the latest in a line of uh, here's the heroic story behind the invention of a product that we all know and love. If we don't get this shooter, Michael Jordan, he's going to beat us up. <laughs> that's right. And I liked it. I thought it was a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. On a budget of $160 million. Huh. We'll talk about that. And apparently Amazon spent 40 to $50 million on marketing. It made $90 million at the box office. But here's an article I found from THR. Oh, you're not going to make me read it, are you? I will read the article to you, Mason, <sighs> in its entirety. Oh. An executive at a competitor called the deal for air crazy, claiming she just bought it off a pitch, went in and bought it for $160 million. Industry sources say it cost far less to produce. Matt, as in Matt Damon, made more money on air than any other movie 
but Bourne. Affleck, who directed the movie, and Damon declined to comment on the deal. So I think they were just offered that amount of money and went, yeah. absolutely, yes, yeah. $160 million. That's an insane call, quite frankly, but we will <laughs> maintain our poker faces. We will be unavailable for comment later because we'll be swimming in our Scrooge McDuck money bins. <laughs> so there you go. Now we're at number five, and I'll tell you this, Mason. And we're living on a prayer. We certainly are. It's Disney all the way down. Oh, no. Bad <laughs> news for Disney. Absolutely. they that had company with infinite money. They had a horrendous Boo year. Boo-hoo. Yeah. And shut up. <laughs> and I do want to talk about why that is the case. And I know people have opinions. I see your comments. On Disney? <laughs> opinions? I don't know. At number five, we've got Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania on a budget of around $125 million. Apparently, according to Variety, it needed 600 to break even and it made 476 I mean, why are you spending this much money on Ant-Man 3? Also, it was clearly shot in a box. Right. You know? Yeah. Obviously, I think the special effects budget just ballooned out on this. And we learnt this year about how underpaid and overworked all the people who work on these movies are. Mm. So, yeah, not a surprise. But I think it just also speaks to the state of the MCU at the moment. And we'll be coming back to that. Mm. At number four, we have The Haunted Mansion. On a budget of $150 million, it made $117 million. Big marketing push in a month that wasn't Halloween when it came out. <laughs> it's crazy. God damn. And I, I wonder if they were like, this is going to do so well and word of mouth is going to spread that by the time it gets to Halloween, yeah. this is going to hit so hard. That's right. It's only going to grow. The line will mm. always go up. But the hype lasted for 24 hours and then it disappeared without trace. Yeah. Apparently it's okay as well from what <laughs> I've heard. At number three, we got Wish. Recently released on a budget of $200 million. I think it's probably around $50 million in marketing because I didn't see a lot of hype for this. I didn't see mm -hmm. people talking about it. I didn't see a lot of advertising across like various social media platforms. I think they probably knew this wasn't going to do super well and had a box office return of $106 million. This was also supposed to tie in everything Disney, you know. It was That's a right. huge anniversary film. And look, I hate to spoil the ending of this movie I haven't seen, but doesn't it explain the origin of everything at the end and where the star's from and Maybe. this thing and that thing. Sure. And that's as much as I know <laughs> about yeah. that movie. Big spoilers. Yeah. I had no interest in seeing this and mm. I didn't. I didn't even take my kids. It might be very good. It feels like the absolute lowest point in just mining existing IP. Because yes. it's like this idea of like, somebody always wishes on a star in a, in a Disney movie. Where's the star from? Who cares? No one's ever wondered. It's magic. I don't care. Shut up. Shut up, Disney. You got what you had coming to you. <laughs> At number two, we've got Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot about one of the most iconic action heroes of previous decades. Yeah, I just forgot he was around. Yeah. yeah. On a budget of $300 million. Ouch. That should be illegal. Collider estimated it needed about 600 to break even and it made $383 million. That's less. Now, I think the problem with this movie is, and there are a number of things, it's that Disney didn't maintain this brand since they yep. got it. Mm -hmm. Where were the animated shows? Where were the comics? Where were the video games? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where were the re-releases of the old movies on Disney Plus? That happened very late yep. and closer to the release of this. Where was the cryptocurrency? Yep. That's his whole deal, man. He loves it. He's always finding treasures. Then you sell us the treasures in a, in a form that's non-fungible. <laughs> and also, I think they just forgot that this isn't Star Wars. This hinges on one man mm -hmm. and he's 80 years old. Yeah. And all fans of this, and there are exceptions, are 35 plus. Mm -hmm, I right. know you might be, you're like, I'm 22 and I, shut up. Didn't you hear us at the start? <laughs> shut up with your opinions. Shut up. You're absolutely right. Because like, you're 35 year old plus they're not taking their kids to this necessarily. I didn't take my kids. Yeah, right. You know? And, you know, people ask me what you think of it, and I'm like, it was all right. <laughs> I didn't hate it like a lot of yeah. people did. I thought there were some interesting elements. All of the things that it retread, like the opening where he's young again and all the chase stuff and all the traditional Indiana Jones stuff. I'm like, I don't like this. It feels weird and an echo of a thing that I really liked. Like the stuff that I liked was that he was older, his shoulders hurt, he fucking traveled through time. Yeah. Like I liked all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. yeah, which yeah. is also the stuff that people hate. Mm. So I acknowledge that, but yeah. also shut up. Now, just before we get to number one, here's some bonus things, Mason. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about some of these made for streaming movies, some of which released in cinemas. Napoleon cost $200 million for mm. Apple. Yep. There is there's no way that made its money back. No. Killers of the Flower Moon, same thing, $200 million. Mm -hmm. I liked both of these movies, yeah. one more than the other. 
cannot be profitable. No, but I mean, in, in those instances, I feel like Apple is doing this because they want some prestige. They want it. They want a Ridley Scott. They want a Martin Scorsese. They want to bring some some prestige to their channel. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if those aren't making money. No, you know you're absolutely I mean? right. And look, and, and from an artistic perspective. Good for them. I mean, Are they can... evil? Yes, they're of course they're evil. Yeah, we know. But there's a fun little fringe benefit here. <laughs> That's right. And it's all those weird faces in those movies. You know all those weird guys? Killers especially. Oh God, my God, the number of weird guys. Oh, I love it. We've also got movies like The Covenant, Guy Ritchie. What? It's the one where Jake Gyllenhaal goes back to... Oh, Desert Storm or whatever? Desert Storm or whatever. Sure, great, love yeah. that. Speaking of Guy Ritchie, we've got Operation Fortune Ruse de Gruz. Two Guy Ritchies yeah. in a year? That's right. My goodness. He pumps them out, mate. Yeah. We had the movie 65, moderately budgeted, mm -hmm. but didn't perform particularly well. Blue Beetle, another big loss for DC. That's right. The Creator, that one's a shame because it was incredibly well made in terms of making something look incredible on a low budget. Mm -hmm. I think... I think. I hope lessons are learned from that, that you can put, you know, 60 to $80 million, whatever that movie cost, and make it look like that, you know? Yeah, as long as you think about it beforehand. Yeah. You don't have to, though. No, I mean, oh, it's not my money. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Magical Michael's Last Dance. That oh, came yeah, out sure. and disappeared, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, comedies took a big hit this year. None of them did well. No Hard Feelings, the big Jennifer Lawrence vehicle, underperformed. Joyride, The Holdovers, Renfield, The Machine, My Father is Robert De Niro, that one. Absolutely. All of these did not do well. I think people now consider these movies streaming movies, you That's know? That's right, exactly. There's not going to be any spectacle, yeah. so you can just wait a month or mm. two and it'll be on streaming. Also, of course, it's currently bombing its way across the world, Aquaman 2. Now, to get back to what I was talking about with The Flash earlier, apparently, according to Deadline, Warner Brothers spent $1.1 billion dollars on the marketing for The Flash, Shazam 2, Blue Beetle, but not Blue Beetle because they didn't market that one, and Aquaman 2, The Lost Kingdom. DC had an incredibly bad year also. Absolutely. Yeah. But at number one, we've got The Marvels, Mason. Oh. On a budget of $274 million. But luckily, it got a UK government subsidy. Huh? Which brought the budget down to $219 million. Oh, wow. Oh, they yeah. covered the Greg sausage rolls <laughs> at craft right. services. That's, That's right. great. That's terrific. It needed four hundred and forty million to break even, and it made two hundred and two million. That's no, less. So look, I just think also the direction of the MCU. Where is it even going? Mm -hmm. Who's the lead bad guy at the moment? We yep. don't really know. All the X Men are here. Great. I guess. That is great. People are excited for Deadpool three. It's one of the most anticipated movies of next year. Like it genuinely mm -hmm. is. But I just feel like everybody I know, like a normal person, not a person watching this video. That's right. If you found this, you're not normal. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch comic book movies anymore. Mm. I feel like most people are just sick of them. There are exceptions. Guardians of the Galaxy did very well. Spider-Verse mm. did well. Yeah. Because they're different and they're fun and they've yeah. got heart and they're not just fine. But I think, as we said last time on the last video about big hits, mm. uh, I think a lot of people went, well, we had 10 years of pretty good, solid you know, Marvel Universe adventures, and then it ended with Endgame, this end in the title, yep. and we're done. They should have called it Continue Game. That's right. Yeah, and look, I guess this has to be addressed because a lot of people say that the reason these movies are bombing is because of wokeness, right? <laughs> Do we have to dignify yeah, this? Yeah, because I see the comments, all right? Okay, all right. And look, there is definitely like a proportion of people that don't see these movies because of wokeness. But I think also those people do see these movies mm. because they have encyclopedic knowledge of the scenes to <laughs> criticise, etc. But if you look at the five biggest movies of the year, Barbie, Oppenheimer, Mario, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Spider-Verse, right? Mm -hmm. All of those things have elements that you would consider woke, you know? Sure. But because they did well, you don't hear about it, right? Mm -hmm. I think, honestly, the contributing factor to all of this is, firstly, the writer's strike, right? Ah, sure. Apparently, if you look across the board, about 15% of sales can be accounted for you can't get your actors and writers to promote mm -hmm. the properties, right? right? I think Disney in particular has also diluted their brands with streaming. Why go and see an animated movie or a Marvel movie when there's a Marvel show or, a, or the Pixar movie is already on streaming, you know? Why would I watch the Marvels when I can watch Secret Invasion? <laughs> exactly. That's a great example. Right. You could experience just a really cool thing at home. That's right. Also, I think, and again, if you look at the top movies, you got to give people a reason to go to the cinema. Mm. Making okay movies made by committee with cameos for whoever for the next thing. Uh -huh. No one gives a shit anymore. <laughs> you got to give people a reason to physically go to a place and spend money. That's right. And I just don't think that is being provided. Yeah, and you know what? The Marvels, in my opinion, pretty fun. 
but pretty fun doesn't cut it anymore. Exactly. I think it could have gone further in a lot of ways, you mm. know, and it just doesn't. And I just look at this list and there are a few exceptions. Like I thought Dungeons and Dragons was really fun. I Please thought- Dungeons and Dragons hat. Sorry. I liked Air, Mission Impossible. They're always a laugh, you know, and a blast. <laughs> They're a laugh and a blast. But yeah, I just think things need to shift. Or well, they don't, because, you know, we'll just keep adding bombs to the list every year. We'll just right. get... These do really well, these videos, do, apparently. Yeah. So from our perspective... We're loving it. Yeah, we're loving it, yeah. Anyways, this is actually our last video of the year, isn't it, Mason? It sure is. But don't worry, there are going to be some Caravan of Garbage compilations that I've slapped together that will be coming out over the month of January because YouTube ad revenue literally halves in that time period. Also, so we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We're actually doing the final episode of the year where we talk about all our best, worst, least favourite, most favourite movies, video games, comic books, TV shows. We go through the whole thing, don't we? And we make some little jokes. And we do also, that's right. Mm-hmm. Also, we have a service called BigSandwich.co where if you do want to support what we do, maybe you do. We did tell you to shut up a lot, so we apologise well, for that. Maybe you like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's your whole vibe. It might just be. Where there's exclusive movie commentaries, video game let's plays. We do a comic book club. That's true. We do one that covers hilarious clickbait, which we enjoy. That's right. It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff? It's mostly good stuff, I think. Yeah. It's certainly stuff. It certainly is. Yeah. But thank you, everybody, for supporting us here during the year. We really appreciate it. Have a safe and happy holidays if you are doing that. That's right. And thank you to Lawrence for the edit. Thank you, Lawrence. All right. Thanks, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you in the new year. Bye. Bye. We're doing Spider-Man movies. They're going to be the first movies for Cameron and Garbage when we get back. I love that. If you made it to the end, now you know. Hang on, which ones? The, The MCU ones. All right, fine. All right. All right, mate. Ah.